Hi everyone, um, thank you very much for watching this More to Life webinar, whether you're joining us live or through our recording. We're delighted to be joined tonight by Stephanie Phillips, who is the founder of World Childless Week. Stephanie is going to share her personal journey and how it led her to starting this amazing week for the Childless by Circumstance community. Then we'll hear all about the things that we can look forward to during this year's 2018 event. If you're watching this webinar live, you can submit questions for Stephanie as we go along, but we will come back to them at the end once um, she's finished. To submit, to submit questions, use the Q&A icon on the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. If there isn't a toolbar there, just move your cursor down over the bottom and it should appear. Any questions asked will not appear on the recording, but we do ask everybody just to make sure that they select the anonymous button before submitting any questions. Obviously tonight, time will be limited. So if we have more questions than time allows for, then I would ask you to email them to me at heather at fertilitynetworkuk.org and we will try to answer them for you when we get a chance to. All that remains for me to do now is to welcome Stephanie, Hello. Um, mute myself and switch off my camera and then she can begin. Welcome Stephanie. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I've got this screen set up here, but I actually want to talk to you a little bit about my journey first and how the 16th of September became important last, well, this time nearly last year. The first thing to talk about is my journey because that's what led us to this point. At the age of about 32, 33, I met my husband-to-be, Gary Phillips. We enjoyed ourselves. We were both young. He's a few years younger than me and we spent a few years just doing what you do when you start going out. We didn't actually consider children until I'd gone past the age of 35 and I remember saying to him that I'd be classed as an old mum and he was quite surprised by that. He thought it was unusual that we'd be classed as old at that sort of age. We carried on trying to conceive but nothing happened for one or two years. Um, at that point, I said to him, we need to go to the doctors. He didn't want to go and dragged his feet and it took several months more before we actually got there. When we did get to the doctors, we went for the usual rigmarole of him having tests and myself having tests. Eventually, we ended up in a hospital in a small doctor's room in front of a very shy, and timid lady and she basically turned around didn't look us in the eyes looked at the floor and said if he manages to get you pregnant it's highly unlikely that you would carry oh excuse me <clears throat> carry full term so straight away i knew we both had problems and we were going to take a double miracle for us to get to that point of having children obviously this broke my heart instantly and I don't recall much of what else was said during that meeting. The only other thing that I do recall is at the end, she said, go away, lose at least three stone in weight, and we'll send you an appointment out in six months time. Well, I went home and I was 39 years old and I knew at 39 years old that my time to have a child was limited through the help of the NHS. I knew that all free services and an IVF would stop at the age of 40. So I went home and I gave up because in six months time, I'd have less than six months until my 40th birthday. I knew that it wouldn't be a straightforward case of let's go in the next room next door and have IVF. I gathered there'd be medicines that I'd have to take to somehow get my body to work that there would be more than likely a waiting list and by the time everything would happen we wouldn't get there in time basically so 
I decided to do the one thing or find the thing to go and find solace in the one thing that would not argue, just sit there and support me. And that was food. So I didn't put weight on, but I didn't lose weight. When the six months went around and I received a call, I turned down the offer of an appointment because even the offer of appointment would be eating into the last six months or four months that were left. So that was it. That was the end to me and to my husband of our trying to conceive journey. I couldn't tell my friends. I couldn't tell my family. I was too heartbroken to speak to anybody. I hardly spoke to my husband as well. We both went into our own worlds of grief. And eventually over time, we actually stopped talking to each other. It was hard, it was a dark place, and it took several years before I looked for support. And I looked for support online on Facebook. Luckily, and to my surprise, I actually found that there were support groups for the Childless Not By Choice community. So I signed up to several of these groups. And when I did and started reading the post, I was actually amazed that people seemed to understand what I was saying, how I was feeling, and what I was going through. I started to talk, I started to answer, I started to comment. And slowly over time, I began to find some confidence in my childlessness. It even got to the point where I started to post online and admit to people that I was childless. Over these years, I also discovered and realised that both America and the USA had their own fertility awareness weeks. The only problem was that they were focused on fertility. All the posts were there were how you were going to achieve your happy dream, how would you become a mum, how could you improve your fertility, or how you could adopt or look at surrogacy. None of these options were there for me. So it felt like I was just left out, ignored. I'd hit a block wall and nobody was there to support me. And I thought this was wrong. So I eventually whispered to a few friends and said, you know, why is there nothing for us? We surely need a day about the child is not by choice. In fact, we don't need a day, we need a week because a day comes and goes and it's disappeared before you know what's happened. And a few friends said, that's actually a good idea. And I thought, okay. So I whispered to a few more friends. And they did the same thing. They said it was a good idea and that I should go forward with it. So, okay, I thought that was scary, but I decided to try and make it happen. So on the 30th of July, 2017, they actually created the World Childless Week Facebook page and it went live. So as I said, the first question a lot of people ask me is why did I choose to focus World Childless Week around the 16th of September? Why is that date significant? Well, I tried to find a date that did find significance. And first of all, I decided I had to wipe out the months that were for America and for England for Mother's Day and Father's Day. I also thought that we can't have the months of Christmas, of Thanksgiving, of Easter. These were too family centralized. We needed some more time. The dates were slowly minimizing and there was still nowhere that I could pinpoint just for us. I looked at religious icons, I looked into mythology, I looked at different areas, but no matter where I looked, eventually the person became a parent. So I then suddenly came across the 16th of September and I found out that the 16th of September is the day most women give birth. So therefore, it's the day that most pregnant women actually circle on their calendar. But that also means it's the day most childless women will remember as the day their baby was due. So in turn, the 16th of September is the day most childless women will mourn. So why would I stick with this day? Because this day is about celebration. But it's not. I don't want us to dwell on the negatives. I want to reclaim the 16th of September for the childless community. I want it to be a day about us. And there are 
ways and reasons for us to celebrate because we don't want to be part of this club but each year we will move forward we can celebrate that we have found support we can celebrate that each year the pain is a little less we can celebrate that each year more of us will speak out we can celebrate that each year more people will hear us we can celebrate that we are worthy we can celebrate that we are not alone so let's reclaim the day and celebrate that we will heal we will move forward as well as the 16th of september people ask me about the forget me not they want to know why i chose it why it represents us it was one of the flowers that came up as a national flower for september and instantly it meant something to me for numerous reasons straight away i thought of this as a forget-me-not as a weed that's how many gardeners will see it i think it's a flower others see it as a weed and because they class it as a weed they see it as invasive because it is an invasive plant it returns year after year it sets seeds everywhere gardeners can't control it but that in a way reminded me of the childless community because a lot of people don't want to acknowledge that we're here. They don't want to, you know, think that there's a negative side, that people aren't always parents if they want to be. But our numbers are on the increase and we cannot be ignored. Each year, more of us will speak out and we are being heard. More of us are happy to say, this is me, this is my face and you will see me. Each year, we're building connections and making friendships that strengthen us. We are getting stronger, we are getting louder, and we are getting more visible each year. Then I look at the actual flower itself, and each forget-me-not stem is not an individual flower, but it's a collection of individual flowers. Each small flower is beautiful in its own right, but when you see a mass of forget-me-nots, they can be breathtaking. To me, this represents our community. We are all individuals, but we stand strong and shoulder to shoulder with each other. We support each other in every way. And then there's a third element to the forget me not because of the words themselves. Because when I say forget me not, I think of the children I dreamt of. I will never forget them. I will not forget them when I hear another child with the same name that I chose. I will not forget them when I see the books I wanted to read to them sitting on my bookshelves gathering dust. I will not forget them when I consider who to leave my possessions to. So when I think of a forget me not, I think of every individual within our community. We are resilient. We will not allow society to forget us, as we will not forget the children we dreamt of. So, when I actually decided to go ahead with World Childless Week, I was actually scared, really scared, because I didn't know if anybody would want to get involved. I actually thought there was a good chance I would be sat there, Billy no mates, on my own. So what could I do if I was on my own? I decided I had to have to write a blog each day, which was scaring itself because I'd never written a blog before, and I had no idea if my words would be of interest to anyone. I wasn't even sure what to write about, so I decided to set a daily topic to give some structure to the week and help me focus on what I needed to research and write about. My blog alone would not be enough, so I'd have to scour the internet for relevant blogs whose links I could add. So my worst case scenario was a blog from me and a couple of links to other blogs. It sounded pretty grim, but I didn't feel I could back out now that I'd mentioned my idea to a few people and gone live with the page. So I'll just take a little bit of time now to run through the daily topics that we have this year and reflect on a couple that we covered last year. On the very first day of World Childless Week 2017, I wanted to show that we, the childless, are everywhere. The reason I wanted to share and emphasize this idea is that so often the first time I have somebody join the support group I have admin, the words are, I thought I was alone. The childless and parents alike need to realise that we encompass every part of the world, every religion, every nationality, every workplace, every street and every family. 
one in three pregnancies end in miscarriage. One in five women who reach the age of 45 are childless. 48.5 million couples are childless. These are not small numbers. We are not a small percent, not as small as people imagine. So I hope that anyone who is childless and came across the Facebook page would know they were not alone and could reach out to support. I hope that any parents who stumbled across the page may stop to read and see a little of the world through our eyes. This is the first day of World Childless Week. It was last year and it is this year. I want to share a quote with you. I didn't know there were so many ways to be childless. My mum made that quote to me after World Childless Week finished. I'd only shared nine, nine stories and it scared me because if she doesn't understand, who does? We are childless due to infertility. We are childless due to circumstances. We are childless due to tough decisions. People need to know our stories. They need to know that nine ways to be childless is minimal. Your words are important and your story matters and we need to share them so that more and more people get to understand us. Last year, we wrote the reason that we were, why we were childless in our letters. And this year, we were right to the children we never had, our unborn children. Many of us know the names that we would have chose for our children. They sit in our heart. If you want to address your letter to your children and use the name, please do so. But if that makes you feel uncomfortable, just write to your dear son, your dear daughter, your dear children. The letter is about you and your children and you can direct it in the way that resonates with your heart. You can write about anything you want and you might want to tell them a mixture of things. Possibly you visualize how they would look. You imagine their personality traits, a mixture of yours and your partner's. We knew the stories we wanted to share with them, the history of our family, the stories it passed down from generation to generation. We planned the trips we would take, the favourite spots that we knew and that we loved. There are no rules and no guidelines. This is your letter to your children. If you want to write a letter, find a comfortable and safe spot and have some tissues close to hand and write from your heart because we're to the future, the future with us. On Wednesday during World Childless Week, we have something new this year. Today, we explore all forms of art. If you're a photographer, poet, painter, sculptor, actor, dancer, musician, or creative in any way, this day is for you. You don't have to be a professional artist or a well-known sculptor. You just have to create what resonates with you and your childlessness. A single image can express a thousand emotions. Again, we have a new day this year for Men Matter. This is incredibly important because men do not talk so openly or share their emotions so readily about being childless. They're often the unseen and unheard halves of our stories. Today, we're going to focus on men and their words because they do matter too. To ensure that our men are fully represented on the World Childless Week website, I'm grateful that Robin, Michael, Kenny, Rod and James have all joined our team as World Childless Week champions. Whilst Robin and Michael will be hosting Men Matter too, there will also be input from Rod, James and Kenny, a lot amongst others. There is no set of subjects for this day, so please just get in touch if you would like to contribute. Last year, when we talked about comments at Hurt, we covered four different subjects. It wasn't in God's plan. No kids, you're so lucky. No kids, do you want mine? And have you considered adoption? All four of these comments hurt in different ways. And we covered a lot about them last year. 
so I'm not going to cover them tonight. But if you'd like to see what we thought, please go back to the website and have a look. This year we'll be focusing on one comment. This means we can explore it more deeply. We can look at why you'll never know true love until you have a child is hurtful, why it's a false statement, and we'll discuss the other true loves that we can all experience. As a child, when we first come into this world, we love our parents, our siblings, our wider family. They show us unconditional love and we return it. As we get older, we discover our pets. We get a circle of friends and we start to build relationships with them. And again, we can find true love with each of these relationships. Then we get older again and we'll maybe meet a partner who can become the true love of our life. But many of us will also have nieces and nephews. These are the nearest children to what would be my own. These are the children that I love unconditionally. If somebody says to me, I don't know true love, I will tell them I do. There are many ways to experience true love. On Friday, or sorry, Saturday, we will discuss we are worthy. Self-doubt is a hard thing to shake and we can all be our own worst critics. Life can be full of many reasons to doubt our worth, but despite our own judgments on our childlessness, we are all worthy. We are born worthy, worthy of love and worthy of recognition. Our actions as we age show our worth, how we treat others and how we treat ourselves. Despite our misconceptions, giving birth does not equate with being worthy. You are worthy for just being you. On the final day of World Childless Week, it's apt that we look at finding acceptance and moving forwards. Over time, our grief will lessen and we will find new dreams. It doesn't mean that we will forget our desire to have been a parent, but it does mean our life can have new perspectives. We can reflect on how we have moved forward since last year's World Childless Week, what changes we have made in our life, and hear from those who have found acceptance and embraced their plan B. These are the faces of the World Childless Week champions. Sorry about that, it's gone out of sync. <laughs> Every one of these champions is exactly like you and me. They have felt the same pain and sadness, but have now taken the steps to speak out about their childlessness. You can find out more about each one of these champions and the work they do to raise awareness about being childless not by choice on the homepage of the World Childless Week website. So, you've seen all the days of the week, you've seen and heard a little bit about all the topics. How can you get involved? First of all, share your story, your letter, submit your artwork, or explain how you have encountered true love, found your worth, or moved forwards. Download a World, so World, sorry, World Social Week, World Childless Week social image. We've now got banners and profile pictures for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram available. You can add your voice to the World Childless Week survey or you can sign up for the world childless week newsletter and be amongst the first to find out what is coming up over the next few weeks and the following year now a couple of months ago now if not longer a lovely lady called cherry williams an award-winning writer and photographer got in contact with me she wanted to do something for world childless week she wanted to focus on the fact that we are worthy and as we were talking she said something that resonated with me it resonated because i'd said the same thing only a few weeks prior so what she wants you to do 
is to take a photo that says we're going to get rid of the labels and we will imply our own label that isn't a label it's just a statement this is cherry williams and she is happy she is curious and she is creative she can say i am me she'd like you to send her or myself a photo with three things that make you who you are you can show your face you can cover your face you can just take a photograph of the three three things on a piece of paper but send us in the positive traits that you have the positive aspects about your personality and your life because at the moment i could actually say oh, i'm nervous i'm anxious but i'm relieved because i'm getting near the end of this webinar but in an hour's time, I will be relaxed, I will be happy, and I'll be excited because I'm moving forward, to world, forward towards World Childless Week. So what you need to do is if anybody says to you or makes you think about who you are, you don't need to say you're childless. You just need to say, I am me. So at the beginning of my webinar, I mentioned my fears of being on my own, that no one would want to be involved. I really shouldn't have worried. People stepped up from day one to get involved and show their support. They shared their stories and their thoughts. My expectations that I would be on my own, I might reach a couple hundred people and I hope to reach a couple thousand people. I kept telling myself that the numbers didn't actually matter. And if just one person was helped, then the whole week had been a worthwhile. But the results far exceeded my expectations. Over the seven days, I shared 100 posts. The few posts were viewed during those seven days over 123,000 times. And hashtag World Childless Week was tweeted 1.2 million times. These figures still astound me today. And these are just the figures from the one page. I discovered afterwards that people were blogging and referring to World Childless Week all over the world. As a childless community, we had reached across the world. We had made a difference last year, and we can do the same and make a difference again this year. And you don't need to take my word for it, because here are a few quotes I took from posts during World Childless Week 2017. I believe this World Childless Week has given me strength to stand up for myself, my feelings, and support something that is important to me. Most of all, it's given me a voice. To know that I have normal emotions fills me with peace, a wonderful feeling after such a long time. For me, I think the landmark has been sharing the posts on Facebook and being open about my childlessness. Although it was really hard to do, I feel much better. You've helped me to be a braver person. I made a pact that I post every day for World Childless Week, and I have. I've found comfort and love, but most importantly, true unbiased understanding, which is what I've been searching for the most. Thank you for helping me feel less alone in my struggles. These quotes show that you made a difference. Now, there's one final thought that I want to share with you. Something that I've seen come up time and time again is that we have no legacy because we have no children. But being childless does not mean that you cannot leave a legacy. Legacy is not always about money, possessions or children. It can be about knowledge, raising awareness, leaving an impression or making a change for the better. When I talked about the forget-me-not, I mentioned how it self-seeds and it was, it was resilient to being forgotten. Perhaps we could help sow the seeds of change for the planet, nurture the earth and plants to sustain our life. Through the simplest act of scattering some seeds, we could be creating something that outlasts us. Just because we cannot leave a bloodline behind us doesn't mean that we can't create generations of flowers or plants. I also think about how we know about our history. What we do is we look at books and we look at films, but before that was word of mouth. 
history began by sharing stories. Legacy was not about possessions or money. It was about sharing your story and your history. Through word of mouth, people know who you were and what you stood for. It was about the acts you did, the changes you made for the better, the way you could help others. You didn't need to be related by blood to tell your stories or to hear them. Even when the names are forgotten, the story of the positive changes made can inspire others to do the same and the story can continue. So perhaps you could buy some seeds to scatter a plant, or perhaps you could share your thoughts and your stories during World Childless Week. Your words have the power to support and strengthen others. Your words could reach out to people who understand and people who want to understand. Your words can give someone else the starting point they need to make a difference to their life or the life of others. Perhaps one day they will share the story and that will be down to you. So sow your seeds or tell your story and create your legacy. Thank you very much for that, Stephanie. Um, that was really, really touching to listen to. Um, I think your story will resonate with many, many people. And I have to say that tonight we've got people watching from Vancouver, Chicago, and in the UK here, we've got Cambridge, Sheffield, all over. So um, your story is definitely being heard. Um, what, what I love about your story and what I think, again, will resonate with many people is you talked about the self-doubt and how sometimes we need to remind ourselves that we are all worthy. Yeah. Um, and I, lo I loved um, the bit about what Sherry, uh, Sherry Williams asked us to do with the photograph and to say, I am me. And yeah. I sat here and I thought, right, listening to Stephanie tonight, which free words or phrases would I pick to describe myself in response to your webinar okay. and I put empowered inspired and happy to be who I am and okay. and that is actually huge if 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 your world childless week and the activities within it are making people feel like that then you really are serving the community um, with with their needs and you're helping them to move on another thing that really struck me tonight before we go on to the questions okay. was that the activities that you have I really felt there was something there for everyone I hope so I really do hope so yeah wherever you are on your journey whether you've just you're just beginning to come to terms with the fact that you are going to be living a life without children or whether you you know you've known that for the past 10 years i feel that there are activities there that you can pick and choose from that you know that you're ready for and yeah. I, and i think that's wonderful that that people can do that now we're going to have a look at some of the questions stephanie and there's one question there at the moment while we're talking about this question, I would urge some of the attendees, if you could type in some questions, and once we've answered this one, we'll come back and we'll have a look at it. Okay, so the first question that we've got is how can the community support you in the work that you're doing this year? Gosh, well, the very, very first thing to do is actually say, I'm prepared to share my story or share something throughout the week because if I need contributions from people, you know, everybody, the diversity of people to show that we're here, that we are around the world, that we're not all the same. We don't have the same story. We might have a similar story, but it's never the same. And I'd say if you are not confident to share your story, you can be anonymous. That is never a problem. But if you're not confident to share your story, then get involved. When the actual posts go out during World Childless Week, add a comment if you can. If you feel brave enough to, if you feel confident, share one of the links because you'll find other people, particularly on the Facebook page, will start to talk to each other and it really builds up a sense of strong community. And I think you could see that from the comments that I sort of read out that 
people were commenting for the very first time publicly about how they felt. And I, I think as well, back to that, that quote that your mum said to you about, I never knew there were, you know, so many way, ways to be childless. I think yeah. when people start sharing their story, it just reinforces that you're not alone. For yeah. different reasons, people have joined this community and there are many, many different reasons. And I think it's always good to have that knowledge of, of how people come to be yeah. part of the community. I'm constantly learning every day you hear something that you've not heard before. So if I'm still learning, everybody else is too. Do you know what I mean? None of us know everything. And there is always somebody who will say something to you and you think, oh my gosh, I've not heard that before. And it'll hit your nerve because it's so different. And, and like I said, there's so much pain involved in everybody's story. But the whole point is hopefully together we will get through that pain and move forward. But yeah, our stories, are, they are so important. Right, there is one more question on here, and I'm gonna put my glasses on to read this. So, it says the website is amazing, it's changed a lot from last time. Will all of the articles that you collect, will they go onto the website? Yes, the hope is that they're all gonna go on the website, and then from the website, they will automatically be transferred to Facebook. And the hope is that we will get links also put through onto Twitter. So if you're in a social media place like Facebook or Twitter, you can read them. But if not, the website is there for you to focus on. So every article will be shared and available to anybody anywhere. And do you have to stick to the particular days for the activities? For the actual sort of, we've given the guidelines because it helps to keep the focus there. Um, the one that we haven't so much is on the Charles and the Arts because people interpret different things different way. And also on the Men Matter too, because... I didn't want men to be limited because they're more hesitant at coming forward than we are. So if, I, if I'd given them a certain subject, it was going to possibly make it, you know, it's just going to make it harder for men to come forward. So on men matter, you know, too, they can speak about whatever they feel about. If they want to address something from one of the other days of the week, that's good. If they have another subject that they really want to express, then that's fine too. Lovely, right, there is another question on there. So, okay, this question is, and actually, I, I think we all are, before I ask it, it says, how do we become a World Childless Champion? I actually think we're all World Childless Week Champions anyway. Oh just yeah, by, we are, in a just way. Just by being here tonight, I think we're all World Childless Week Champions, um, yeah. but I'll let you answer that. There are no set rules or set guidelines because it is all about being a team. And so the whole point of the website is it's not just about me. It's not just about my input. Yes, I came up with the idea, but it wouldn't happen without everybody around me. So the idea of champions is they are, first of all, they need to be confident to be public. They need to be confident to speak out. So it's saying, I'm here, I'm childless, suck it up. I'm going to talk about it. And while they're talking about it, they'll hopefully say, you know, we support World Childless Week whose aims are to raise awareness, not just to the childless community, but also to parents. That's the next step to make sure we can sort of bridge the gap between the childless, the child free and parents. That's incredibly important to make sure the community goes forward stronger together and united. So a champion is somebody who wants to support World Childless Week, to speak out openly. Um, like I say, there's no set guidelines. It's, it's, it's just being, confident in who you are and saying yeah let's make a difference a difference for the you know for the better for everybody and and back to that I am me again just by being part of the group and part of the movement sending in your photograph with those Please. three things yeah and I said empowered inspired I could also put on there I feel like a will childless week champion just by being part of it and I yeah. think that's important um that we, we all feel part of it yeah, I think, I think there's so much we can actually get from I and me. Yeah, but absolutely. It's not a label. Yeah. You know, I don't, I'm not a mother, I'm not a father, I'm not child free. I am childless, but at the same time, stop that, I am me. That's all I need to be. I don't need to have a label. And that can go to everybody throughout the world, whatever situation they're in. They can just be I am me. Perfect. And I think that's what we all need to know, that it's, it's okay to be me. We don't, as you said, we are worthy as we are. There's one more question down here. Okay. So it is, how is World Childless Week being communicated to people? 
e.g. on Facebook, etc. And I, I think we've already, we might have already answered that with, with the website. Would you agree with that? Yep, the website. And as I said, there's the World Charlie's Week Facebook page. There's, I'm also on Twitter. Again, I've, um, you can find me there or on Instagram. But all the links, if you go to the website, all the links to all their social media are all there on the page as well. So you can easily find me without having to remember the names or the tags. Well, Stephanie, I've, I think it's now time for me to say thank you very much for all your time tonight. I have thoroughly enjoyed this presentation and I know we've reached many people across the world and across the UK, but in the wider world too. Um, I'm sure very much that this community will benefit from the World Childless Week event. Remind us of the date again, Stephanie. The 10th to the 16th of September. And the website is? www.worldchildlessweek.net. Lovely, thank you. Now, uh, for those um, of you who are watching live tonight, a reminder email will be sent to you with details about where to look out for the recording video on YouTube. We hope to have it posted on there within a week or so, so just give us a little bit of time to do that. Um, please do also look at our website um, for the upcoming webinars that we have. Our next one is on the 11th of September when Nikki Fletcher is going to tell us about the Childless Not By Choice magazine, which I'm really looking forward to as well. I just really, one more time, want to say a huge thank you to Stephanie and for everybody that's joined us live tonight. This has been thoroughly enjoyable, very informative. And as I said, I feel very empowered and I'm honoured to have been part of it. So thank you again, Stephanie. Thank and I think, it's, I think it's time for us to switch off and say goodnight. So goodbye, everybody. And do remember to catch our recording in a week's time or so. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.